is May Gibbs. At the moment, I live in a house in Neutral Bay, Sydney. And it's a dear little place with a long, long garden. I'm very fond of it. Once upon a time on the beautiful Sydney shoreline was a house called Nutcote. And in that house lived a remarkable woman called May Gibbs, who turned gum nuts into tiny people and banksias into villains. So while the likes of Kenneth Graham and Beatrix Potter populated the country lanes and hedgerows of Britain with Mr Toad, Ratty, Jemima Puddle Duck and Peter Rabbit, May Gibbs was doing the same here, turning the Australian bush into a fantasy wonderland. The first books that I ever did were the flower books, so the Baronia Babies, Wattle Babies, Gumnut Babies, and I think another baby, flannel flower babies. I used to walk about the garden, weeding the garden and loving it with a book in my pocket and a pencil. And that's where I got all my ideas. I used to think of them when I was gardening. Every one of those botanical drawings or artwork that she uses is botanically correct. You can identify every plant and flower that she drew and uh, they're all amazingly accurate. Caroline Minogue is the chair of the Nutcote Management Trust and someone who is well versed in the life and times of May Gibbs. But it seems to me she was very much a part of developing a national kind of psyche or character around the Australian bush. I mean, she went out into the Australian bush with fresh eyes. She saw the wicked little Banksia men sitting on those branches and she thought, wow, this is a fantastic evil character I can put into my book. Banksia men, for instance, I saw when I was out walking with some cousins in the bush and I suddenly thought they looked just like wicked little men sitting up there. And she also then took the gum flower blossoms and made them into the little skirts for the female characters with the little cap on and so that it became a new way for Australians to look at their surroundings. I thought of the name Snugglepot for a book on gum nut babies, but I could not get another name. I wanted two, and one night lying in bed quietly, I thought of Snugglepot Cuddle Pie. The stories just rolled out of me. I had plenty of them and no trouble at all. She was one of Australia's first women who could actually support herself by writing and her artwork and that, that meant that she was very unusual for the times. And this is the sort of place where she did most of her work, would you say? Oh, yeah, she did, she did nearly all of it, yes. And she worked uh, on the comic strip Bib and Bub until a very short time before her death. And she always worked in her little workroom there. She was here for 44 years, so this was where she did the bulk of her work, yes. And the garden is uh, uh, quite an interesting thing to me. There's, there's a lot of exotic plants there, you would imagine. There'd be a lot of banksias and yes. Christmas bells. And well, a lot like. of our, our visitors find that. She went into the bush for her inspiration, really, and she just let the, the part that's down to the front of the house just go down with its natural native scrub. And if she wanted to draw and be inspired by the bush, she went up into the Blue Mountains where they had a piece of land. She was quite the gardener herself. Oh, she loved the garden. The garden was her inspiration. I mean, her final book that she wrote here, um, Prince Dandelion in 1953, is all about the English type flowers. I mean, she couldn't get out as much at that time. May Gibbs' magical imagery has brought the bush to life for generations of Australians, myself included. In turn, I've shared this delight with my four daughters. May's love of our flora is a very special part of our culture so I can't help being curious as to where her ideas came from. Out of my old head. <laughs> I've got lots of ideas even now. You can't help having ideas, can you? <laughs> <laughs>